Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Tiger Den. Heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Caleb, how are we doing? It's been a couple weeks. We had a little bit of hiatus here. Yeah, we did. We had to make some structural changes to our, our, our show. I, I heard you might be done after this one. Your it's, contract was cut. You know, I re-signed. They gave did me, you? They gave me a nice. good, yep, there was a generous donation mm. to keep me here uh, at John Reaver. $3,100, oh, nice. 27.923 cents. Wow. I don't even know how that works, but he made it. Yeah, that's He's really that nice. He's that kind of guy, yes. Really nice so, guy. So, um, Thanksgiving. We yeah. haven't done a show since before Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving, sir? Same as every year. Did you eat a lot? No. Did you eat anything? No. Um, actually, one <laughs> of our guests, Michael Donnell, told me to not eat anything because we had basketball practice the next day. Ooh. Mm, yeah. That's kind of mean. It's terrible. That's yeah. It's fantastic. I well, had. A, I honestly, I didn't eat a lot either. I mm -hmm. went down to the cities and visited my family. Oh, nice. I had an aunt up from from Illinois, but Ooh. didn't eat a lot. A couple pieces of turkey and a piece of pie. Yeah, something like that. Chocolate pecan, me. something. Ooh. It was fantastic. More of an apple. Uh, apple, really? Yeah. What about pumpkin? Do we have a no. Oof. No. All right. Well, we have a great show for you. Yeah, today. we do. We are finally going to close and wrap up the fall season today. Yes, we are. And then we're going to hit the ground running into our winter sports season, which yes, is in full are. swing, wrestling. we got basketball to talk about. Dance. we got dance. We have robotics and speech yep. and a bunch of stuff coming up, yes. concerts yep. and everything. I'm really excited. So let's get right into it, excuse me, and get to our first guest, who yep. was a senior this year on our volleyball team, uh, who, of course, went, I believe it was 28-4, and four, somewhere in that Some, neighborhood. Yeah and uh, had their season end in the subsection championship game, sadly, Walker. but uh, had a wonderful, wonderful season. And Anna Feltels is here joining us. Hello, Felty. Hello. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Good. Well, first of all, give us a little recap of how you felt the season went. I feel like it went really well with how well our team worked together and the bonds that our whole team had was really good. Yeah. Is that different than prior years or maybe a little stronger? Or Probably a little bit different just being the senior on the team. It probably felt like it because I've been with that those girls the whole time. Gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. Well, what was your favorite part of this season? Probably just the bus rides and stuff, <laughs> especially the bus rides home, listening to the music would always, you know, make Hershey mad when he was trying to take a nap or something, but we didn't <laughs> care. So, <laughs> Caleb? You know, Anna, so being a senior this year, do you feel like this was your best season, or did you have years where you thought you played better? I don't know. I <laughs> guess that's kind of a weird question. <laughs> but well, you know, yeah, but but I mean that you know some people I, I can see where you're coming from because yeah. some people they get to that senior year and they it's maybe a pressure thing of that. If mm -hmm. if I could answer a little bit just from a standpoint, I think this was probably one of the best years I've seen you athletically wise. Yeah. I feel like it's a little bit different being a senior because there's that leadership role. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took a step up to be that leader. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit different for me. One more of the key players were other years. I'd like know my role more as like helping out the team and stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great point. And you know, uh, being a leader, I, I mean, that's, that's not a role that everyone can step no. into. No, honestly. for sure. Um, what are you going to miss? Uh, just being with the girls every day. Even now, like seeing them all together for basketball and stuff is just weird for me, like not being a part of that, mm -hmm. when every day I was with them for hours on end. Gotcha. And Anna does participate in golf in the spring. Yes, right? yes I do. So you've gone to state not two years in a row? Or just no, one? I just didn't go last year. You didn't go last year? No. Nope. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> so, um, last question I have for you, actually, before we get to yeah. the, the fun ones. The fun, the fun questions. Um, what, if you could give a piece of advice to any of the young people looking, could, being a senior now, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. what if you could go back and tell your eighth grade self or ninth grade self something, what would that be? Like, get involved in everything. You're never too cool for anything. Like, no matter what, just do it. You might as well. Yeah. That seems to be a recurring theme. Yeah, it's really you does. Know, our seniors are really smart. Yeah. We, we must have done something. It must be the fourth grade class, the teaching staff that, that the really fourth grade has helped these guys along. We didn't have to know. Well, but I mean, that's where they're at right now. That's why he stepped oh. into that role. Mm. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. <laughs> Definitely wasn't the fifth grade staff. No, no. <laughs> so or the band teacher. What else you got, Caleb? Yeah, um. the band teacher. He's a he's a jerk. <laughs> you know, we always ask this question. And it's always one of my favorite ones to hear. Who is your favorite teacher? Mm, mm. That's an easy one. Um, hands down, 
Lisa Toft because she has the cutest dog ever. <laughs> That's not like you. You didn't learn anything from her. <laughs> you just think she has a cute dog. <laughs> no, not only that, but she's always been there for me. One of those people I can always talk to. I haven't had her as a teacher since freshman year, mm. I think. But she's also the C team volleyball coach. Okay. But no matter what, she's the one. I'm always in a room talking to her in the hallway. We always talk. So she's one no matter what, whether she's your teacher or not, you can always go to. What uh, What are your plans when you leave the thriving metropolis that is Pine, Pine River Valley? Oh, I love okay. this question. Um, <laughs> I'm not really sure, but something business. I'm thinking marketing at either NDSU, UMD, or St. Thomas. Hmm. Not sure yet. We'll see awesome. what happens. Well, and that's all right, but at least you have some sort of an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it seems like college is definitely in the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Very good. Nice. Well, thank you, Anna, for being here, and congratulations on a good season. I, You know me. I love watching volleyball. It's a lot more, and this is no offense to anyone. I just, yeah. I would much rather watch volleyball over basketball. Oh, me too. <laughs> me too. Um, but uh, but I, uh, it's it's always was a lot of fun to go watch the, mm -hmm. the, the tournaments and just games, and I'm going to. It's going to be sad not being able to see you on the court anymore. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. So now let's swing into yeah. the new season. Woo. And you know me, I love to swing into seasons with jokes. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Who is Rudolph's favorite singer? I, I could say, but I'm not because I already know. Beyond Slay. Ooh. I know, that's horrible. <laughs> I had a couple more better ones, but um, they're inappropriate yeah. for a uh, school YouTube <laughs> <laughs> thing. So I have a few more here. We'll get to them as we go. Yeah. Um, so let's get into basketball here. Yeah. First, we have a couple of results from the last week here. Yep. Uh, our girls last Tuesday uh, sadly lost to Wadena Deer Wadena. Creek in yep. overtime, 72-69. Yep. And weird game, Tuesday night against yeah. Cass Lake. Cass Lake Pina. They, they were up 20 points at half yeah. and ended up losing it. And I talked with Coach Swaggle about this, and he said it was one of the weirdest things he'd ever been a part of. He just It was anything that could go wrong went wrong. Um, turnovers and then – 27 of them, to yep. be exact. And the, and, but the, the two that were um, – they had kept, kept him in check, and that was yeah. the game plan, and the first just exploded for points. And he was just kind of like, it, it yeah. happens, you know. Yeah. It was, it was a real tough one, but uh, leading the way, uh, I guess Ramsey had a really good night. Ramsey mm -hmm. two and check uh, for 18 points yep. against Cass Lake, and it's going to be kind of fun to have some of them on here and, and yeah, look at that. Yeah, for sure. Um, their upcoming schedule looks like if anybody wants to take a little bit of a drive, <laughs> no kidding. Lake of the Woods on Friday Ooh. night. It's only you know like three and a half hours weather yeah. pending. You know they have a McDonald's there you can get a cheeseburger. Sweet. There's not much and else. And they're taking a charter bus. Ooh, Ooh. Lucky. Ooh, yeah. They don't do that for the baseball team. I or <laughs> or the basketball team. And we really, really had to try to get it for the football team. <laughs> so, uh, and then looking at the next week, they have one really tough week coming up. At next week, they Sabika. play Sabika yeah, good and team. Pequot at home. Both are really and good. And then they go to Monaga, who Monaga Another got bumped up to 2A team. this year. Yep. All and so that's going to be a tough, tough week. I think that's going to be kind of what they would call in the college ranks the gauntlet. Yes, no kidding, gauntlet. no kidding. So, um, at this time, let's get to your team, the boys. Yeah, yeah. Um, one game under your belt, right? One game. We went to went to Uppsala. Uppsala, Minnesota. And it looks like, if you want to go through some of the stats. Yeah, yeah. Um, really, it was actually a really good game for the boys. I thought there was a few times where we looked a tad shaky, and I think we'll talk to assistant coach Mike Donnell, and he will um, give a few stories about that. But... Pine River won 63, Upsala 51. Um, Champ Howard with 12 points, Lewis Bukers with 15, Brady Raff with 25, Evan Fenstermaker with four, and Ryan Struess with seven. And then we had for Pine River, 39 rebounds, 17 assists, um, 11 steals, 11 blocks, 14 turnovers, which in basketball, 14 is a lot, and that's how you lose games. Um, field goals was 16 three points, um, five or fi three point field goals five yeah. and then three throw was 16 and 23 for 70%. That's not too bad. No, that no 70% so, is not I'd bad. I'd say 70% in high school is probably about an average. I yeah. think that coaches would want higher than that, but mm -hmm. that's pretty good. And I listened on the radio and it, it seemed like the first few minutes was a little shaky, but, yeah. but, uh, uh, everyone kind of settled in. Uh, yeah. I know there was a couple of interesting calls at the beginning. 
Yeah. Um, and then I, even the guy on the radio was going, I can't believe they called that. <laughs> and I started laughing. But um, at this time, we're going to be joined by, by the Michael Dunham. The Michael Dunham. The, the Michael who Dunham. is pulling triple duty today. Yeah. So he is here representing football coaching staff, the basketball coaching mm-hmm. staff, and as our staff spotlight of the week. Ooh. So first, Coach, I would like you to just kind of give a little bit of a recap of our football season this year and how you felt it went, especially coming off like a JV season. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very successful in the fact that uh, all of those players from that season last year that was a JV schedule returned, and, and with that actually a couple other kids who previously weren't out for – football came out as well, Caleb being one of yeah. them. Yeah, I so I think that in itself is a success to be able, where being the fact that you had low numbers and had to have that, that you were able to sustain what you did have and then add a few pieces. And then the uh, last year's eighth graders, this year's freshmen, was a pretty big class and, and were kind of, in a way, forced to contribute, but at the same time, those that did contribute, um, they were ready and they did help our team. We did finish 500 in the regular season, four and four, and then lost our first playoff game against Breckenridge. Uh, so ending with a record of five and, f- or excuse me, four and five. Um, I believe we won the games we should have won. Mm-hmm. Um, the games that we did lose were not very competitive, but were good for us to see kind of where we stand and where we need to go to make the, to take the next step as a program. Uh, but I think it's always a successful team it, it, or a successful season in that, you know, the, ki- the kids did stay positive. You know, you don't have any infighting. And the kids came and they, they practiced every day and worked hard. And, and they gave their best effort regardless. And, you know, as a, I know that's a lot of coach speak. But, you know, from a coach's perspective, that's kind of really all you ask for day in and day out. Well, and I know we've talked about on here before, too, that it seems to be there's there's kind of three levels, especially at the Class A. There's – the, those top tier teams that are going to yeah. be your seven and one, eight knows, or you yeah. know, in baseball that are maybe losing one or two games, um, and then there's you know, which is maybe ten to fifteen percent of the teams in the state, and then there's a big chunk in the middle that are pretty competitive, and then there's yeah. those a uh, few of the you know at the bottom that they have a team and they're you know at least doing it. They're, yeah, they're competing, but they're not you know they're they're getting zero and eights, one and eights, and I think. Mm-hmm. The goal is obviously to be in that top tier, but you want to maintain that middle tier for sure. And I think that's a good spot to where, as, where you guys were this year. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, there's probably not enough parity in high school sports and high school football. Um, but those teams that are good year in and year out, it's not an accident. Yeah. You yeah. know, programs and success are really built on tradition and things that have been done years and years and years um, over time. So, you know, I think every high school – team, organization, program, whatever, really strives to want that where you have that level of consistency. Yeah. And and I think that that, you know, breeds success. Mm-hmm. Oh, my question? Yeah. Ooh, where, can we move to basketball? Please, yeah, okay. by all means. Let's, let's move to basketball. So recap what you thought, like what you thought Uppsala was for the boys basketball team, or like how did you think that went? Well, I think it kind of went – you know, obviously it went well getting getting a win. Uh, as a coach, I think you spend more time critiquing and looking at things you can do better than kind of looking at how well things went. And that's kind of a, you know, you hate to do that, but you do. I, I thought the boys played really, really well. Um, you know, we had a 10-point lead going into halftime mm-hmm. and did, weren't really playing well at the time, at least Coach Reaver and I thought. And when we came out of halftime, you know that ten point lead quickly quickly yeah. deteriorated into a, a one score game, and I believe at one point the the game was even tied. Yep. Um, and so it kind of took you know a few key shots and some stops and probably some some calls that went our way to kind of bounce back and eventually you know separate. But you know I kind of talked with Coach Reaver about it, and the, the analogy I used was kind of like playing on a beach. Yeah. You know that first game. You know, it looked like we were just running in sand. A little bit slower, you know, you want to dive after a ball, but, you know, you don't really have that game speed quite yet. So I thought, you know, for what we had the first game on the road, an hour and a half away, we played well enough to win, but we are going to need to play better Mm -hmm. to win other games uh, 
down the road here. Well, and, and looking forward into the season too, I mean, obviously we know Brady, uh, Raff, and, and Louie are going to be big contributors for you, probably Champ as well. Is there anybody you're looking at that's probably going to have to step up, maybe um, someone outside of the starting five, you know, as a bench player? I know uh, one person that comes to mind is maybe like a Casey Markham or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's something, again, as a, you know, when you're a single A team, you know, being able to, to go deep on your bench is something you'd love to have. It, and, and it doesn't always happen because everybody's got a different skill set. Yep. And, you know, depending on the game that we're playing, uh, might depend on who we do rely on, whether, you know, the other, other team is, you know, playing man to man, playing a zone. We've got different talents and people that can step into roles that can help us um, win some games. Uh, I would say, you know, Casey Markham. Uh, Brady Bristow, um, even uh, Caleb talking about today's game and that, you know, Aiken's going to come in with some bigger physical kids and mm -hmm. and if we run into foul trouble, which we probably will, mm -hmm. um, that we're going to need people to kind of step in and give us some minutes, give us some breaks so we can maintain, you know, all the way through the game. But I would say, yeah, uh, uh, you know, Champ Ho Howard, uh, Casey Markham, and even a newer, new starter this year, uh, Evan Fenstemaker will be some names that some kids that are going to really need to kind of step up and develop their role and that's the big thing that we talk about all the time I mean you're not going to have five dominant scores on the floor and you don't need five dominant scores mm -hmm. on the floor what you need is you need to have everybody understand what their role is and do that to the best of their ability yeah. and those teams end up having success or end up finding themselves in good situations at the end of the year well and I think you know players are always a, a, a resemblance of their coaching staffs too mm -hmm. You know, there's there's different styles of coaches. Uh, I, yeah. Of course, I work with Coach Donnell here in baseball, and and um, you know, there's the yelling styles, and there's the yeah. the this and that, and, and and there's nothing wrong with any of those styles. No. But I would say that our coaching styles that of our staff here are pretty good because mm -hmm. it, it's a it's a caring style where yes. but the expectations are there, and I think that's a that's a big big mm -hmm. deal. We're gonna shift gears one more time, go into time. third gear, because as a staff member here. Uh, Mr. Donnell has been teaching, how many years have you been here? This is my 10th. 10th year, okay. And he is currently teaching fourth grade. I think you've yep. taught like fifth, sixth. Uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh, seventh as well. Yep. There. yep. So, well, a couple questions on that. Just to, first of all, tell us where you're from. Okay. Um, kind of, you know, where you went to school, mm -hmm. what you kind of participated in, and we'll ask you a few questions about that and let you be on your way. Okay. Um, I'm a 2000 graduate of uh, Perm High School. And upon graduation, I went to the University of Minnesota Duluth where I got an undergraduate degree in public health and wellness in which I did not use. But <laughs> see, there's I, a lot of jobs in that. There's a, there's a lot of jobs. I just didn't know <laughs> what I was gonna do or what I was capable of doing. So um, I graduated in December, so kind of in the middle of the year. So I moved back home and, and quickly got a job with the perm schools as a junior high basketball coach and doing some other things with strength and conditioning and got hired as a paraprofessional in that district. And that kind of led me to realizing that I really did like the school system mm -hmm. and that I kind of should have trusted my instinct and that I wanted to go into education. Um, and then after that, my position was cut. Um, and so it's kind of jobless, homeless and all that stuff. And so. I packed up everything that I had in my Pontiac Grand Prix and <laughs> drove out to Las Vegas and lived on my brother's living room floor for, for well, a couple months. And then I got a bedroom and for about a year and enrolled at Minnesota State University Moorhead. And for the next two and a half years, got my uh, teaching degree and landed a job here at Pine River Bacchus in the fall of 2009. Time flies, doesn't it? That's, Time flies. That's quite the story. Mm -hmm. I, I mean... That's not your standard path to becoming a teacher. No, say. no, it's definitely not. So, well, along with that, say you kind of touched on this, but what kind of led you that that direction? Was there that was there one moment, or because I, I know I've shared before that I had kind of a moment yeah. where I kind of I went, yeah, this is where I need to be. Yeah, well, no, and it, I I always enjoyed school. I wasn't the best at school, but I always enjoyed school, and I was always in activities and athletics, and was very prideful of my school and community. So I always liked that setting. Um, and then when I got the job as a paraprofessional, I worked in a level three environment in which, you know, these kids were kind of in a day treatment center in which half the day was with social skills and, and therapies and the other half was a self-contained classroom. And so it was really, really rough group of kids for lack of a better term. And 
I just kind of really enjoyed the, the process of it and being around teachers and, you know, people that cared for kids and kids that cared for their teachers and just that whole atmosphere and really, again, it was kind of one of those reassuring things. It was like, it was easy to get up every day and go to work and it was, you know, things like that. So, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, with, with teaching, you know, you have to like what you're doing. Otherwise, yeah. I, most yeah. of us enjoy being here. Yeah. I, I would say that. So on, on the personal side of things, yeah. obviously you're married and you have a couple of children. Yep. Um, what do you enjoy doing outside of the 97,000 hours that you spend yeah. here between coaching uh, and this and that? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, it is. I, my, my wife works a lot harder than I, I do. I, I coach three sports, football, basketball, and baseball. So I am gone a lot, and especially if we're on a, on a road trip or something like that. But, you know, outside, you know, when we do have times or stuff – you know, we like to travel. We like to do things. When you have kids, it's it's all about creating an experience for them. And almost, I don't want to say living vicarious through, through them because that looks <laughs> sounds bad, but it's like, you know, when you see your kid excited about going to the beach or going to the pool, that's exciting for me. So that's what we enjoy. But, you know, being able to kind of do those things or see those firsts for my kids, that's kind of the things we enjoy. And it's, and again, every parent would probably agree with this. It's kind of hard to have hobbies at this stage. I have a two-year-old, you know, <laughs> yeah. who I'm just trying to keep alive or in one piece <laughs> at one point. And I have, you know, a five-year-old who wants to know everything and learn everything. So, yeah. When, for those of you who don't know, Mike is kind of the comic relief of in the school sometimes. We'll get emails sent out to us, and uh, all of a sudden you'll get a sarcastic remark yeah. back, and it's usually you, from this guy. So. Yeah, you were the one who made a sarcastic remark about Randy Shorts, right? Were you the one who said I that? Pro probably, <laughs> yeah. only yeah. because he made a remark about my socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with with you doing athletics in um, high school and doing them, or coaching them now, what is your like favorite sport to coach? Well, Football is my favorite sport to coach. It's my most passionate mm -hmm. sport, if you will. Um, but it's, for me, like I said, and I, I heard you talking with uh, Ms. Felthouse, too, about, you know, watching volleyball. And I don't coach volleyball, but yeah. I'm a huge volleyball fan. Mm -hmm. I was talking with uh, uh, another coach the other day, too, about how, you know, I'll flip on TV through sports and I'll end up on, like, the Big Ten Network watching yeah. – you know, go for volleyball, and it's like I spend more time watching that than yeah. something else because it's just so fascinating. So it's like I love sports, and, and when I'm in basketball, I'm invested in basketball. When I'm in baseball, I'm invested in baseball. So it's for me, it's really easy to love and enjoy all of them mm -hmm. and kind of compartmentalize them. But, it, you know, as an overall, my most passionate one is okay. football. Well, I know I got two more questions. Do you have one more? No, you're good. You can. Okay. Yeah. I, the first one I want to ask you is, if was there anyone in your – upbringing and coach or teacher or something like that was kind of like a, a mentor to you or someone that sticks out in your head. Most people kind of have one. I know I have one. Um, it probably he would look at me and go, really? Because I hated you. But um, I just wondered if there's anyone that kind of sticks out in your head in your upbringing that kind of. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the thing too is like, you know, my favorite teacher, you know, or I shouldn't, I don't know if I really have a favorite, but probably the teacher as far as the teaching, uh, uh, teaching aspect of it goes would probably be my sixth grade teacher Mrs. Cato um, and likewise she would probably go oh really okay. <laughs> yeah. didn't yeah. didn't see that but you know when you have time to reflect as an adult you know she would be uh, the person that probably inspired me most there and then as far as athletics or maybe even just career driven growing up would be my one of my high school football coaches and athletic directors from uh, Perm Fred Saylor okay. last one I have for you sure. and I think Caleb will have one more after that you think? I think. Oh. I know he's okay, going to think, think for the next two minutes here. Um, <laughs> is, do you have a favorite moment, funny or whatever, just in your years of teaching, something that's happened to you that you just, you've always remembered? Because I, I think back to myself and I, you know, I can think of a time when a student came up and asked me a question and I just bust out laughing. <laughs> and they had no idea what they had said until after, you know, you just can't control it. I just mm -hmm. wondered if you have one of those moments to share with all the thousands of yeah. watchers. Yeah, no okay. kidding. Well, being that there are so many viewers, there's one story I, I, I won't share on air. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, there's one that I, I can think of. I think it was my second year. I think it was my second year teaching, and I was in the middle school. So I was teaching uh, fifth, I think it was fifth grade, uh, fifth grade and 
and some title math. Anyway, so my homeroom class had, I think, Phi Ed first period, mm -hmm. so that was my prep. I'm, and they were playing soccer, so I decided, yeah, I'll go with that, I'll play soccer with them, I'll kind of run around and stuff like that. So I was running around with them, playing soccer in the gym, and the ball came bouncing my way, and it was, you know, a little bit higher, so I kind of did one of those, get a karate kick, throw my leg up, I'm going to kick yeah. the ball, and <laughs> boom, blew up my pants. You know, <laughs> like, not just like, oh, little pinhole, but like, just blew, <laughs> and, and immediately kind of went into panic mode, like, what are we going to do? Uh, I don't have an extra set of clothes or gym clothes yeah. in a locker. It's like, oh. And so I was kind of looked at the clock, and I'm like, okay, I live 15 minutes away. That's 15 there, 15 back. Do I have time? So I busted home, went and put on, you know, different fans, hoping that I'd get back in time for my class to come back to me. Thankfully, I did. And, you know, guilt set in, thinking, my goodness, I just left school grounds. I know it was my prep, but it's only my second year. So I told my principal at the time, Mrs. Bruns, and I said, hey, I just let you know. I blew up my pants uh, playing <laughs> soccer, and I had to leave school, and I had to go get new pants, and she understood that. So, <laughs> so absolutely. You know, that, that comes to mind, but, I mean, if you are, and I love talking with teachers who have been doing this forever because they have stories that, you know, you wouldn't believe, and I, and I do have some of those, and, yeah. and I think as a teacher, you know, if you took five minutes at the end of every day and just kind of journaled or wrote up, yeah. you would have a, a huge book at the end of your career about Probably just the things that kids say, the kids, yes, yeah, no the kidding. kids do, and <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, you know, and it's, you, you think, once you think you've seen it all, yeah. then you just get to somewhere yes. where it hasn't, yeah. honestly. Yeah. All right, last one. Last one, and my question is, you've taught fourth grade, fifth grade, what would be your favorite grade to teach? Well, I, I'm, I'm quite partial to fourth grade right now. I think it's kind of a good mix for my mm -hmm. personality and that, you know, you're trying to foster independence, yep. yet at the same time the kids, you know, are learning a lot of things for the first time, so you yep. get to, you know, kind of usher them into that. And um, I also think they still like you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. or at least they're not afraid to tell you they like you. And, you know, they, they like, for the most part they do like school, and, and so that's enjoyable as well. Um, but that's hard, you know. I have taught a few, but and I've and I've liked them all for different reasons. And sometimes I think I'd love to teach a college class, mm -hmm. but you know, at the same time, I really like the interaction with with students, and I don't know how much you get that in the yeah. college aspect. Well, thank you, Mike, for being our our representative for the fall, for yes. the spring, but all, or for the winter, but also our first elementary staff spot. Yeah, right. there's there we one go. In there. Yeah, I was trying to get one, and we've had a couple of. Uh, High school yeah, teachers in here, but them. you're the first one good from deal. elementary. So thank right, you so yeah. much, and Welcome. good luck tonight against right. Aiken. Yeah. Thank you. All right, you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All righty, Caleb. If you would do Tip us up. such a great and run through the next few games for the boys. Okay. Here. So if you want to track or do a trek all the way from – I'm going to – now we're talking about tonight just because okay. we're doing Aiken. We're talking about Aiken. Yeah. But if you wanted to make a track from your couch to the gym, it's Aiken, Minnesota in Aiken or in Pine River. Good grief. But then they go to North Home Kellier on Friday. Um, Cass Lake Bina next week, December 12th. Um, Berthy Hewitt at home. Um, Pillager at home. Black Duck at home. And Monaga at home. So we got a few home, home, games. Few home games. Yeah. And I know the band will be playing at a I've, couple of those games too. Well, so. all of them. Not all of them. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I think the kids would kill me. Uh, I, I want. I just want to point this out mm -hmm. too. Um, uh, where was it here? Oh, the um, the Bertha Hewitt game. The the one that's at home is on the seventeenth. That is before we go to Christmas break. Yes. All the rest of those that you mentioned were after Christmas. Yes. Yeah. So January. So in, right in the first yep. couple of weeks of January. And yeah. then I think one of these games I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but that is going to be the drawing for the fish house. I'm guessing it's the Bertha. Yeah. It would be my guess. Yeah. So just make sure that you support the booster club and buy those yes, tickets. Th yes. And yeah. if you find any, uh, most coaches have. I know I have some. Mm -hmm. If you want to come talk to me, they're five dollars a piece. Uh, I got a couple books left. And there's a few um, businesses around yep. the area too yep. that and do do that. And I tell you what, the Booster Club does a fantastic yes, job they do. out here. They do a lot of, a lot of good things. I know they've helped out not only athletic programs, but yeah. they've helped out the band, the choir, yep. and that. And they do a lot of great work. So please support yes. that. I am going to throw a little special bonus in here today. Are you, Caleb? Are you? Let's I am. Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you. Okay. 
What? What? Carol, what? What? What carol do they sing in the desert? An Egyptian Christmas carol. Oh, camel, ye faithful. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to do a little game here. Okay, that Bertha Hewitt game is on the 17th. Yeah. Right? So we're probably going to have another episode. So let's say yeah. Friday the 13th is the cutoff. So anybody watching? Friday the 13th. That's, that's not a good day. No, just watch. Friday the 13th. There is a black bucket in my office. It's okay. It's a file box. I'm going to leave it empty, and I'm going to put some little pieces of paper on there. Okay? And if okay. you come into my room and you write your name on that piece of paper... And you write the secret word. Secret word. And we got to come up with the secret word. Here, and you put it in there. I'm going to draw, and whoever I draw out is going to get a $10 holiday gift card. That's really nice of you. Yeah. Is it your own money? It is my own money. I'm oh. donating this because, oh, one, really nice. it's Christmas time. It's the yep. season of giving. That's but, true. two, it'll be kind of fun to see who's been watching. Yeah, that is true. Because if you're watching and you get... Uh, and if there's only one of you, then you win automatically. Exactly, yep. And so let's come up with a secret word. Okay, I think it should be. You got anything? Mm, I have one, but some people wouldn't like it. Oh boy! <laughs> so I'll just I'll just leave that one to myself. Ah, how about we do like um. I don't want to say Carol because then we could probably think that's somebody's name and be like Carol. Ooh. Carol. I like where you're going with this. Yeah. How Chris about we go with Holly? But the, well, that's a girl. Yeah, name that's too. a girl's. Let's I go um. Lights. Lights. Unless that's a girl's name. Could be a guy's name. Well, I mean, they, nowadays, yeah. <laughs> any name could be a name. True. Right? Uh, all right. So if you write your name and the word light, lights, L I G H T S, has yep. to be spelled properly. Yes, it does. I'm write not that on them. and put that in my little black box. I'm going to draw after school on Friday the 13th. Okay. And whoever I pick out will announce the next time we'll get a $10 yeah. holiday gift card. Or you know what we could do is draw for people hand. who are watching, we could do it at the talent show. Do you want to do that, or do you want to do it on the air? I think we should do it on the okay. air. Okay. I think we should do it on the air. All right, the last thing I want to get to here. Wrestling. Is wrestling, yep. The Pequot. Um, the P the Pequot. <laughs> <laughs> the pa <laughs> this guy, I tell you. I, I know, the I'm Pequot, hilarious. The Pequot, the road crew. Oh. Um, we have a couple of results. They did mm -hmm. a quad on uh, Tuesday, December 3rd. Yep. Uh, they beat Osakis, 48-28. Mm -hmm. to 28. They yep. lost to Bertha Hewitt, Verndale, Parker's Prairie. That's a mouthful. Yeah, no kidding. And they also <laughs> lost to Minnewaska. But I do want to point out yep. that Jake Polar was 3-0 on okay. the day. Um, talked to a couple of the wrestlers, and they said that it wasn't their best effort, but yeah. it was the first time out, and there was a little bit of nerves and, mm -hmm. and this and that. Um, they are doing a try tonight. Yes. We're recording this on Thursday the 5th. Uh, try tonight against Walker and Deer River, and they also are – going against Mora, and they have, I believe, a big tournament this weekend in Wadena. Yeah. So the wrestling is is uh, getting underway, and we'll try and get a um, couple some, of the yeah, wrestlers on here. Some basketball and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So I, we're into full swing. Full um, swing. Tonight's try is at Pequot Lakes. I wish we could have gotten that yeah. on there earlier. Yeah. No but I do know that they host... They host I believe a few more. Friday the 13th, they host oh, a, ha, ha. a quad that night as well. well so, and, and that'll be... Uh, I think that one's... That might actually be here. Well, and also, there's just looking ahead, just looking at the schedule, they, Pequot, will be hosting the big conference, section or conference one here later on yeah. in the year, but just like a heads up because it's going to get a, it's going to be a busy, busy place. Busy place. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And that one's going to be at the Pequot High School. Yeah. Yes. Pequot. Yep. More gym space. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. More taxpayer money, too. <laughs> So, well, and, that, you know, I, I, I'm I not a big, I will be honest, I'm not a big fan of wrestling. I do like mm -hmm. to go watch and support our boys. But I did, I was able to actually run the clock for one last year. Yeah. I learned a lot I, when I was sitting there because it's, it's a lot more complex than you yeah. think it is. It's, it's simple because there's only, like, six ways to make points. Yeah. But, like, how they're, you know, because I'm sitting there going, well, why is that? And why yeah. And so if you ever get a chance to, like, sit with somebody who really knows what they're talking and about. And listen. And yeah. listen and, and watch, it's it's quite entertaining and i i've done the clock for wrestling meets and i told randy right after i said never again never again. never again I, yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting it's yeah you got like three stopwatches and you're doing this and that yeah and that. it's not it's too much for me not a multitasker so, um 
couple other things on the calendar. Monday night, December 9th, is the elementary five and six program, so fifth and sixth yeah. grade band. And then, uh, that will be up uh, in the performance gym at six o'clock. Yep. And then the sixteenth is the big is the, the big, big show. The yep. big show. We got seventh to twelfth grade choir, seventh to twelfth grade band, chamber yep. choir, um, um, jazz I, band. Jazz band plays beforehand. Ooh. We actually do a pre-concert out in the cafeteria. Okay. Um, because that being combined with the two group yep. or the the two programs, it does get to be a little long. So yep. we try to keep the extra extra ones out of it. Uh, and jazz band has their own concert coming up in okay. February. So sweet. Um, they do play some just some carols out in the in the uh, commons. commons area yeah. as people are coming into the oh, gym nice. prior to. So and then we actually play during lunch the yeah. next day. So, but if you get here on the 16th, seven o'clock in the performance gym, yeah. I know we've got some great music planned up. I know the band is doing a Christmas festival, which has a bunch of different jingle bells and sleigh. Mm. Um, sleigh bells. <laughs> sleigh bells. Silent night and, and some different carols. We're doing Hallelujah Chorus. Choir is doing uh, a lot. Feliz, si Feliz, Feliz Navidad. Navidad. Um, yep. Silent night. Ooh, that's that pentatonic one that's just beautiful. Yes. Silent night. Holy night. Yeah, that, I don't sing in choir. If you can yeah. Tell. Yeah. <laughs> band is a good place. Yes, I am definitely a band director. Uh, what else? Um, there was one other one. Oh, and we are going to do uh, the Christmas song as our finale together. Yes. So choir and band, we are going to actually start working on that one tomorrow. Yes. Um, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, and we're going to have this beautiful back and uh, forth, back and forth with the choir and the band, and I'm really excited about yeah. that. So, um, I think this is going to be a fun winter. I, I am, think so too. I am excited. I think the girls are going to be a little bit younger and undersized, but I think they got a good chance. Yep. Um, I think our guys' basketball team is going to yeah. be. It's going to be an interesting season. Interesting. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, I. You know, I think they've got a lot of potential, and I hope they can Me kind too. of meet up to that. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to leave you with this. Okay. Surprise me. Why are Christmas trees so bad at sewing? Um, they have bulbs for fingers. No. Oh. They always drop their needles. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, thank you so much no, for thank watching. You. Thanks yeah. to Mike Donnell and to Anna and for my co-host, co my cohort, cohort in crime, Mr. Caleb Travis. I am Ben Kinsler. We yep. will see you next time.